Well, I'm joined now by the radical cleric Anjem Chowdhury, one of the founders of the controversial Islamist organisation Al Muhajiroon, and by Julie Siddiqui from the Islamic Society of Britain. Also joining us from Amsterdam is Douglas Murray from the Henry Jackson Society. And before we talk to all of them, we've unearthed footage tonight which shows one of the alleged terrorists, Michael Ada Bellagio, at a protest by the now banned group Al Muhajiroon in 2007 outside Paddington Green Police Station in London. Anjim Chowdhury was also on the march. So, one of the suspects attended your marches, listened to your lectures. You therefore helped radicalise him. Will you apologise for what's happened down in Woolwich? I'm not going to apologise for exposing the crimes of the British government in no, Iraq or Afghanistan. That's not the question I yeah, asked. Well, you me, helped radicalise this suspect. Well, let me answer the suspect. question in my way. Radicalisation is a stick which is used to beat the Muslim community. The fact is that there is conflation between exposing the British uh, foreign policy, between things like rendition, Guantanamo Bay, uh, killing innocent men, women and children, which I have no apology for whatsoever. But and we will, continue, we will continue to expose... You helped radicalise well, the suspect and now a British no soldier is dead to, on the Without allowing me to answer the question you the way that I want to. Well, well, the question I'm asking is, well, you well, helped well, radicalise well, him let me just tell you because something. you were there with him on these marches. Will you apologise? Radicalisation is calling for the Sharia nowadays. Radicalization is exposing the British government. Radicalization is commanding good for bidding evil. We say, and we've always said, that we live here under a covenant of security. It's not allowed to target innocent people right. in return for our life and worth being secure. And we've said that over the years. Radicalization but the fact is, is... The fact is, the biggest radical, radicalizing yes. factor is the British government okay, and the foreign policy. But radicalization is also about justifying violence, isn't it? No, it's not. Will you no, take not, some no, responsibility no. for what the, has the happened is, on the, the streets is, of Woolwich? The thing is, pejorative like radicalization, fundamentalism, extremism, extremism is used by the British government to silence a section of the community which exposed their own policies. There's something called Islam. Islam calls for the Sharia. Islam says that people have a right to defend themselves. And we, that's okay. what we propagate. We don't propagate something outside of Islam. Douglas Murray, how should the government uh, respond to the kind of things that Anjim Chowdhury is saying there? Well, it's very difficult in a way for the government because al Mujahirun and its offshoots have already been banned. Uh, its offshoots have been banned for many years. And this group, of course, and its activities predate 9-11. I mean, I think it's very important to remember that uh, Amer Mirza was convicted, first a member of al Mujahirun was convicted in 1998 for his attempt to firebomb a British army barracks. Uh, there have been a spate of attacks. Um, we've worked out that about 20% actually of convictions, uh, of al-Qaeda-related terror convictions in this country, have a linkage with al Mujahirun and with Mr Chowdhury. OK, Douglas, uh, let me put that point direct to Anjum Chowdhury. I mean, that's quite an astonishing figure. I mean, you take some responsibility for that, don't you? No, not at all. I, I think that you need to make a distinction between legitimate political and ideological struggle, which we have been doing for about 15 or 20 years in this country. You know, I've never been arrested. I've never been arrested for organising any terrorist activities, any kind of military bases or anything like that. And the, the reality is that people we come across, we, we have a huge number of demonstrations and processions and activities, and of course we come across many people. People may leave okay. our own activities and do things okay. you know, okay. outside of that, but, and we're not going to be accountable okay. for that. But there is nothing legitimate about radicalising Richard Dart, who plotted to bomb Wooden Bassett. How many jihadists no, no, have you no, how many jihadists wrong. have you're you influenced? Richard How Dart, many people Richard have they Dart killed? was in prison for nine or ten months. He faced he faced a choice between having about twenty years in prison or taking a plea bargain. He, in he, court, he, in court, he made a couple of phone court, calls. He typed a few things a, on a computer. Wait, okay, okay, wait. The in fact court, that he was forced to plead okay, guilty doesn't court, mean that he was planning anything no, at all. In court, you radicalised him. It was said in court. Radicalized you radicalised him. Richard please, Dart. Please, please. How many jihadists you know what, would you for, say you radicalised? For the British government and their own media wing, radicalisation is calling for the Sharia. Radicalisation is exposing their murderers in Muslim countries. Radicalization okay. is saying that Can we want the Sharia. The fact is that, you know, these kind of terms are used to demonize the Muslims okay. and to justify your foreign policy. OK, Julie Sadiq, let me bring you in. What's your response to what you've heard there? Well, I just want to, first of all, give my um, condolences and thoughts to the family, friends and the people of Woolwich, really, the family and friends of Lee Rigby, of course, today we're seeing the, uh, you know, face to a name, really, and it makes it even more horrific and very, very sad what we saw in our streets unfolding yesterday. You know, I think, really... We, all of us, any decent people in this country, will realise that this kind of uh, rhetoric has no place whatsoever in this country. You know, what we saw yesterday and what we're seeing with uh, the likes of the English Defence League, you know, for me, 
in both ends, they are trying to divide this country in a way that we won't stand for. You know, the good hundreds and thousands of good people in this country, you know, Al Mahadroon and any of his offshoots have always only ever had tens of people, not hundreds, not thousands. You know, so really representing a very, very small number of people in this country. And you mentioned the EDL there. I mean, there have been uh, some mosques targeted by the far right. Do you think Muslims, mainstream Muslims, are fearful today? I mean, I think Muslims do feel vulnerable today. Um, and, you know, some mosques were attacked yesterday and we're hearing all sorts of other stories coming through. And, of course, we have to all remain calm and measured uh, to make sure that these things don't escalate any further because that's obviously something that we, we uh, don't want to see in this country either. So I think Muslims do feel vulnerable today. But I think the overwhelming majority of Muslim organisations and individuals have come out in full force today to absolutely condemn and say that this kind of action has no place whatsoever in this country. Douglas Murray, uh, David just, Cameron uh, said that these attacks will bring people together. Are we not terror-struck as a country? No, I don't think so at all. I'm not terror-struck. You're not terror-struck. Almost none of the British nation, I should think, is terror-struck. What we are is united in disgust, Muslims and non-Muslims. You know, it's, it's extraordinary, really, for most of us, because we've all witnessed Mr Chowdhury and his group for many years trying to provoke the British people. Uh, he's got on his record not only uh, the huge swathes of people that he has helped to radicalise, but, of course, he's also created the English Defence League, an incredible double whammy achievement for one individual. But, you know, one of the things that's most interesting in this is the continual provocation of Mr Chowdhury does not persuade and will not persuade most of us to believe that most Muslims are like Mr Chowdhury. They are not. Most Muslims in this country are utterly disgusted by him and his actions. And the important thing to remember for non-Muslims is not to be provoked by Mr Chowdhury, not even when he says, as he did earlier this year, that his £25,000 a year that he gets in benefits from the British state is what he calls jihad seekers allowance. If I may make one point, okay, okay. Mr Chowdhury was almost certainly better paid than drummer Rigby. That fact is something that we should mull on and I would suggest yeah. sort out okay. swiftly. Uh, uh, Anjum Chowdhury, I mean, so these suspects viewed the soldiers, soldiers generally, as legitimate targets. Do you? Well, let me just say, first of all, that Douglas Murray... No, 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 wait a second, wait a second. Douglas Murray is talking rubbish. I'm not getting 25k okay, a year. We'll I'm not on aside. JSA for your information. Leave Check your facts. Yeah, we'll and talk she's around as well. We don't have suspects. 10 or 100 members. Okay, we have many. Right. But the point These is, suspects. soldiers you... soldiers who are fighting in Afghanistan, obviously the people have a right to defend themselves. What we say in Britain is that we have a covenant of security. In return for our life and wealth being protected, it is not allowed for Muslims to target the life and the wealth of the people with whom we live. But i tell you something. The people, The people who are oppressing the Muslims is the British government. The people who are banning okay. ideological and political struggle are the British government. Okay. They don't Andrew, allow people to express Andrew, Charlie, themselves. Andrew you've had, you've had your time. You've had your say. Thank you very much. We have to move on now.